the conference board readings were really out of the park. Would you have expected the consumer was holding up that well in January? Well, I, I think that the typical reasons why the consumer holds up relate to, in the short term, the stock market. And up until, of course, Friday of last week, the stock market was in, was in great shape. And, and the jobs data, as well as the wage data, has been pretty decent. So even when you see a faltering on the uh, corporate side of things or, or continued weakness in manufacturing, it doesn't tend to morph into the consumer side of the economy until you see a hit to either the stock market or the labor market, and we just at that point hadn't seen it. Well, indeed, the Richmond Manufacturing Index as well coming in at 20, Lizanne, and economists are looking for a minus 3 after a minus 5 reading last month or the previous month. December was mi minus 5, January 20, plus 20. What does that tell us about the manufacturing economy? Well, that's one regional Fed survey, and you do tend to get volatility there. But what the hope for, and I think what we're starting to see, is a bit of stabilization associated with the signing of phase one. It's been our view that we were unlikely to see a significant rebound in any kind of sustainable way, either in corporate confidence or related to that CapEx. Uh, more of a stabilization. Because if, if you think about it, if you're a, a large multinational corporation, you've been holding off on long-term big investment projects, CapEx projects. And if the reason behind holding off has been trade, I'm not sure signing a phase one is a sufficient alleviation of those concerns to sort of kick back in the full cycle. So our view is that we were likely to see stabilization, um, particularly if it was confirmed by further stabilization um, outside the United States. Now, whether the coronavirus uh, calls that into question, that we'll have to see. But yeah, stabilization, I think, is in the cards. But a, a true rebound, sort of a re of corporate animal spirits. I don't see that in the near term. Lizanne, Guy in London, I want to come back to the coronavirus in just a moment, yeah. but let's talk about growth in a little bit more detail. The message I'm getting from the commodities markets, copper, iron ore, from the oil markets, lower, all kind of sending me a signal that growth is a risk right now, growth is at risk. I'm getting a similar signal from the bond market as well. I, right. the, the story there is that we're going into reverse, not accelerating. Am I reading this right? Well, I think in the near term, sure. And there's a lot of comparisons to the SARS epidemic back in 2003. Now, I think there are enough differences, not least being that public sanitation and personal hygiene are better. Not that I'm a virologist and, and have any particular insight into the virus specifically, but some of those comparisons. In addition, there are comparisons to the hit that China's economy took back in 2003. Now, their growth rate was significantly higher then. The hit is for real in China. It didn't have an impact on the U.S. economy back in 2003. In fact, the, the stock market did quite well. The U.S. economy did quite well. But I think it was more insulated and there was more upside momentum anyway. So I think what we're seeing reflected in things like bond yields and oil prices is the very real possibility that at least in the short term we see a hit to economic growth. There's also a lot more U.S. companies that are uh, intricately tied into China, many of them making announcements in the last couple of days of suspending operations. And they span not just in the sort of travel areas, but broader consumer areas. So I think a re-rating of growth in the very near term, at least just specific to coronavirus, is probably justifiable.